Welcome back to our reenactment of Field of uh, sorry of Waterloo using Field of Glory Napoleonics. And here I am with uh, the Prince of Orange, and he's going to tell us a bit about what's happening. Uh, I believe you're launching a, an assault to try and retake Hugomont. Yes, that's right, Ian. Um, unfortunately, we were pushed out of Hugomont a little bit earlier in the day, but um, we've rallied our troops behind the walls on the far side here, and now we've charged them back in. And this time, I'm leading them myself. Oh, is that As a brave the prince, move. prince of Orange, I'm going ahead. Is Bullets there a chance then that, around, that, that I'm doing you, okay. could, you could go down here? Absolutely, but, you know, uh, for king and country. Um, <laughs> Uh, there, there is also uh, uh, the uh, divisional uh, commander, Cook, who's also charging in as well, so we're making a gallant assault. Um, and if this doesn't work, what does that mean? Is this, is this, a, is this a really conclusive well, part, or is it this this still other things you can do? This is a very good chance of success. I, I don't want to look about. I ah. talk <laughs> about failure. I think we're going to retake this, this edge of uh, the Hugomont, and there's a very good chance that then we might be able to push on. But we are outnumbered, and we're outnumbered boom, three to four to one. That uh, doesn't sound like good odds. No, but um, once we're inside the walls, hopefully we can hold on and keep well them out this time. Good luck with that. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'd like to get a quick update from Napoleon. Napoleon, welcome back. If you come over here a little yes. bit. Thank you. So, Napoleon, how are things going from your point of view? Well, we're very pleased that Huguenot has fallen. Yeah, that was a, a uh, bit of a surprise and a, a good one to pick uh, up so early in the day. Fine general, generalship, I think. <laughs> uh, we're pressing on over here on the ridge. Uh, so this is, th this is Dale Ron's corps attacking, um, which we've just seen on the uh, Inscourgeable Digital. We've just seen that attack going in, and Dale Ron managed to get up to the slope, and he's kind of stalled around here at the moment. So you're... Just slight, slightly behind, because I think you guys stopped for lunch, which I think was very unreasonable. Oh, we're all French. We looked after <laughs> you. Um, yep, we're bringing up the uh, Dorlon's Corps uh, with the cavalry support and all the guns are blazing. So uh, I see, gonna yeah. I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit so we can see a little bit closer, because I can see what looks like French cuirassiers moving forwards in the line there. That's right, yep. We've uh, managed to sneak a few in. Hopefully it might tip it with the balance in our favour. So what's the plan from this stage on? Well, to keep uh, pressing ahead onto the ridge um, before the Prussians arrive. Um, that's the so I, I, I heard there's some dust on the horizon. Faint dust, yes. Uh, Nothing you're too concerned about? The moment. Okay, a, confi a confident Napoleon here. Thank you very much, Napoleon. Um, uh, come have a quick word with uh, Wellington now, please. Hello, Gillian. Hello, Wellington. So. Give us the overview of the situation. Well, we're feeling a, a little bit more comfortable in terms of what went wrong early in the battle. I, I do feel uh, the Prince of Origin Cook will gallantly lead the charge and retake enough of Hugomon that we can hold on for a long time there. I've been riding up and down the line, um, rallying some troops, and we've nearly got our line properly reformed, but barely a, a minute too soon, as you can see. They do seem to be an awful lot, lot of uh, French coming up the hill. An awful lot of French, and I still need to get a few more of our quality troops into line that were driven back by the firepower. But you seem to have quite a large cavalry now. reserve here as well. We do, we do, and I, I think we're going to need it. <laughs> so we're trying to save it, although I seem to have squandered a little bit of it over here, trying to get... Yes, I heard rumours of the, um, yes. the, was it the KGL or the... Yes, our veteran KGL, has, uh, I'm afraid, were taken down by some uh, French Lancers, although I think from memory the 4th Lancers were particularly distinguished in their fighting at the actual battle. So, so that's your excuse? That's my excuse. And Fair enough. <laughs> yes, ab absolutely. So that's the news down here where we got the reserves up here and, and sorted things out. We've driven them back out of Papillot. You can see here. So Papillot is now. It's, it's now. Uh, it's now. It's not in Allied hands, it's but half it's in it's our hands. It's neutral half that half. side of Papillot. And I think we'll be awarding medals to the troops who held the other. So half they're still of holding on. They're still holding on. And yeah, holding uh, on well. I do see something coming down that road. We do. So there's lots of blue uniforms coming in, and we hope I'd they're Prussian. I'd <laughs> like to have a, a chat with the general leading the um, the advance from off table there. So are you speaking with a French or a German accent? German. Aha, the Prussians have arrived. Oh, we've come out of camera. We can't see us. Um, come down this way a, a little bit. I assume you must be a blue then. We've been marching for some time towards the sound of the guns. Uh, we can now see some smoke. That's uh, good news for Wellington, I assume. So how many men are you bringing with you, blue We've only got two brigades at the moment. 
So how, how many men would that be? Are we talking five, ten thousand? Around that number, we're, we're, we're told we're yeah. told that's around yeah around that number. So, th where's the rest of the Prussian force? Following on behind. And so, when do we expect them to arrive? Within the next hour. Within the next hour. So the Prussians really are here, and the French are going to have to do something about that. There's just too many of you to ignore. So, the battle is really in the balance. Can the French punch through the line before the Prussians arrive, or um, are the Prussians just too late? Well, thanks very much for your time, Blucher. Um, return to your men and G them on to see what you can get on the battlefield. Thank you very much. Next, what we'd like to do is we are going to move across to um, Ian Dickey. Um, he's brought along some very interesting items with him that we're going to have a look at. So we did talk about his equipment earlier, but um, we'll talk about the, the guns and things instead. I'll just bring the camera over here, see if we can get in a convenient position. Yeah, kind of, kind of got you in screen, Ian. This is a, an item of French equipment. Um, so Keep your microphone a bit closer, otherwise. This is an item of right. French equipment. This is a French saber briquet. It's an infantry NCO weapon. Um, saber briquet translates as woodcutter uh, loosely, and that's probably what it's mostly used for. Um, so it's not a combat weapon. Well, it could be used for anything, really. Um, we were talking about the uh, fight to take Paplot earlier, and the I'll show you in a minute a, a, a musket. But in close quarters, if you ha can't, if you haven't got space to use your musket, this is the kind of thing that could turn the difference. It would definitely be an advantage over a musket in a close combat fight. You, you, you can obviously fence with it. You can you could certainly take somebody's arm or a head off with it if you can get a good swing. Um, so it's very effective. Is it uh, something they would have trained with? The officers was more were trained in sword fighting, but not the ordinary men. The NCOs would have picked it up more as a sort of bar, um, bar and brawl weapon. And if, if you can get the camera on the underside of the hilt, uh, just there, you might be able to see a number 37. That indicates the year of manufacture. So this was actually made 1837. Uh, so this isn't a replica. This is a real. This is a sword real one, period. and you can tell if uh, it's difficult to show on the camera, but. If you run your hands on either side of the blade, you can feel that it's actually been beaten out by a man with I a hammer. I can actually see the way the light's catching it. That is yeah. not a smooth it piece of metal. It's, it's not lots smooth. of subtle no. undulations. It, uh, it has character and weight and purpose. And if anybody wants to challenge me on that, I'm prepared <laughs> to accept. Do you um, know if it was actually used um, in battle or...? Uh, 1837, it, it could have been used up until about the Crimean War. So that potentially has been used yes, in and anger. And the scabbard is original as well. Do you, is it the same? Does it fit it or it there's yeah, no way yeah, to know? No it's no the it actual fits. scabbard. The unfortunately, the brass um, ferrule on the end has, has fallen off, but that was typical of, the, of, of what happened to these things. No, that's a very nice piece of equipment. So let's see if we can slip that back in. So, sorry, can I just hold that for a second? You want to hold my sword? I want to hold your equipment, yeah. That's... I mean, it's yeah, a, it's it a big old slab pull of metal. It out. It's, it's, I was just wondering about the weight. It's a, it's a good that weight, isn't it? It is heavy. If yeah. you hit somebody with that, you'd hurt them even yeah. if it wasn't sharp. The other thing that really surprised me, which we'll get to in a minute. Oh, I'm not sure I've got it in right. Um, if we, I don't, do you want to look at the Yeah, next? Let's, let's look at this, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the musket for last, and I need two hands for this, so can you Let just hold, hold the, the microphone? microphone? When you're getting ready always goes on last because if you need to swap with a cartridge box with somebody else who's dead or somebody needs yours it's y easier you want to take your sword off to try and switch them exactly yeah uh, and both these white cross belts would be secured by the epaulets of the jacket we'll see the jacket later okay so the epaulets actually had a purpose and they weren't just decoration they were yeah absolutely okay now then it's can you do it one-handed i can do this bit one-handed <laughs> um, let, let me hold your microphone for a moment uh, it's okay there's uh, a camp hat strapped to the bottom. It's called a pocolum. We'll get that out and look at that later as well. But you can see there's a, th first of all, there's a flap. Then we've got a second flap. Oh, and inside there. this large pocket, we can get 30 cartridges in a wooden um, drilled out holder. And if you need more cartridges, you can just bung more on top. 
But the chances are 30 were more than enough for a firefight. The firefight rarely lasted longer than that. Would the guys have expected to have to reload or resupply during the course of a battle? Uh, it's unusual, but it's certainly possible. I mean, we've been uh, running the the game uh, next door on the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, if those guys, uh, even fighting for um, Paplot, had fought, had fired more than 30 shots, it'd be very unusual. Right. 30 was usually enough for a battle. This extra pocket here was for a triangular tool, which had a, a, a pointy bit, a pricker. I'll show you the reason for the pricker in a minute. A, a screwdriver for taking the lock to bits so you could clean it out and another sort of more nebulous tool which seemed to be used for all sorts of things. Now, if I could get you to hold the, m the mic yep. again. Yes. Um, How are we going to yeah. do this? Shall I hold the gun for you? Okay. That's it, right. The wooden bit is called the stock all the way through. The end here, at, at the, uh, the shoulder end, is the butt, and then we've got the neck here, the narrowest bit, the lock here uh, was called the lock because it was made by locksmiths. This happens to be a brown best. You start off by taking part of that extra pocket, biting the end off, pouring the, a bit in the pan, closing the... So the cartridge was basically gunpowder? Uh, the cartridge was gunpowder and ball in a white paper cube. So the gunpowder's in there as well, okay. Yes. Sorry, the so ball you bite, in there. You, you bite the top of the cartridge, inevitably you get gunpowder in your mouth. So by the end of the, bat the battle, your face is stained black with gunpowder. Um, so you get a bit in the cartridge, a, a touch in the pan, close the pan, the mustard goes down like this, you put the rest of the pan and the ball in the barrel, you pull the hand off, which is extremely, this isn't my gun, <laughs> it's extremely stiff. It's Don't worry, we'll, apparently <laughs> it's not going to come out. <laughs> um, you examine that cartridge home, you bring the gun back up and then the officer will say, the French would say, apprete vos armes, and Oops. comes around. Our low roofs are not helping you here. The ceiling is not. <laughs> <high enough. laughs> um, and you'd end up pulling the trigger. I think that illustrates your point nicely about how difficult it was to wield one of these things in um, yes. a building. And you, you would fire from, from this position. There we are. That should be Right. Now, the, bay the gun takes the bayonet, takes it up higher than the bayonet. Yep. The ceiling heights in here are, are reasonably um, period because this is a very old building. So, it, yeah, it wouldn't be unusual with the bayonet on. You wouldn't have much clearance at all to it's hold like it upright. It's getting stuck in a piece of wood yeah. or the furniture or the ceiling as the person who's trying to help. That's the time when you really need the saber. Yep. Okay. So this is the brown vest. It's got the metal barrel on it in its place. The metal barrel has lug plates and pins. There's one there, another one there. To the wooden stock. About halfway through the war, Prussia had been beaten and subdued by Napoleon and rose in rebellion again. We sent 30,000 of these that were worn out for the Prussians to use. It's very kind of us. <laughs> Various debates have gone on as to in what way they were worn out. It could have been the lock was worn away and very loose, but that could be tightened up with a, a file and a bit of adjustment. My opinion is that pushing these pins in and out every time you needed to clean the barrel would wear away the wood and that therefore it was the stock that got um, worn in that way. And that's not repairable? Really. Not well, only by building a new stock, which is almost as much of the, the gun it's itself. It's very time consuming. Yeah. The difference between this and the Charville, the, the French metal, is that the Charville barrel is held on by a series of metal bands and as the bands come down the stock, stock becomes bigger, so that if the charvel wears on the, on, the, on the stock, you just ram those metal bands down a little bit further. Okay, yep. So um, easier to maintain, really. Yes. Now, everything flows from what's happened before. The French took over Spain. Spain had been previously fought over by Britain and France to see who was going to be the ruler in Spain. And the French won that war, Spanish succession. So the French then started to adopt 
sorry, the Spanish started to adopt French military equipment and designs and made their own version of the Chava. So instead of having steel bands, a flat band, they had a big brass cutplate where on the Chava steel. And the lock was made inside out with all the inner springs and mechanisms on the outside. Was that so it was easier to maintain and replace? Or? Uh, it was probably so the officer could see whether it was maintained <laughs> and whether it needed cleaning. There's a flint in these drawers which strikes this pan and throws it back. The striking flint against steel causes a spark. The spark goes in the pan which we've already filled with gunpowder. The gunpowder goes whoosh. And the flash goes through this tiny touch hole in the barrel, which lights the powder inside. It's a small hole, is that was it reliably igniting? That's why you need the little tool with a pointy ah. bit to go in the push some gunpowder in that hole. The Not to push it push in, but to clean, clean it out. Right. The gunpowder leaves a residue. Uh, so the first thing that gets hanged up is this flash. And right. The goes out, and you have to clean it by uh, hot water. Well, that's not something you could have done during a battle, is it? On the battlefield, the only source is a stream of water. <laughs> Warm enough. Let me guess. And acidic <laughs> you're absolutely right. They used to do that down the barrel in order to clean the musket out. In during a battle. During a battle. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. The other thing that I was really surprised about, so if you can just hold the microphone, sure. Yeah. It's the weight of this thing. It's, yeah. it's just a solid piece of metal and wood, and that, holding that up, just aiming that, it's you're you're going to get tired pretty quickly carrying that round. Yeah. You've also got the bayonet on top. You're carrying maybe a sword. You've got your ammo. Everything and else and you're carrying, and a backpack. Because everything you own. And what you were saying also is that a lot of these people were not particularly well nourished, so they weren't necessarily big chunky guys. No. And, and uh, don't forget that this is the period right up until World War One, more soldiers were killed by disease and exposure than by enemy action. And yep. you start to see why. There are uh, excavations have happened at a place called Vidnia on the Polish Russian border, and the Grand Army reached there and a lot of them died of exposure and were left in the in the ditch. The excavations show that most of them had broken bones in their feet from marching with these heavy loads on. Broken bones in their feet? So they were marching <laughs> in pain all the time. Jeez, yeah. No, it's... Uh, we have things easy these days. <laughs> yes, I mean, the, the modern soldier wouldn't dream of carrying a weapon this heavy. Yeah. Uh, that is very interesting, Ian. Thank you very much for that. My pleasure. Um, just checking How if are we the, doing are the digital team ready to kick off with the next scenario. Whilst we're waiting, I'm just going to do a tour of the battlefield. Um, thanks once again, Ian. That was very interesting. And you've got some more equipment to show us later, so we will look forward to that. What we'll do now is just have a tour of the French line. I can see some French cavalry redeploying, possibly over towards the Prussian threat. And the digital team are ready to have us back, so I am going to hand over to them whenever they are ready. Okay, and here we are back. Let's turn off the sound a bit again. Here we are back in the uh, digital reenactment we've got going here. Mm -hmm. And we just attacked and took, in the previous scenario we played, took this ridge line, held it for a brief time until the enemy counterattack was launched, and we got an inconclusive fight. And after that, the French were driven back. And now we're going to, we're back to launching again our attack on La Haye Saint. Uh, going in there for the second battle and our casualties have actually carried over from have, the previous have stayed there yeah I was saying how much how many were killed in especially this this area that we're now viewing it's <laughs> just it's just chaos really. it is yes definitely so this these are the casualties that we just took in the previous battle and they've carried over into this battle and now we're again ordered to to clear out the air, this area for a possible second wave mm -hmm. attack mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we've suffered so many casualties in the previous battle that that's going to be next to impossible. But of course, Napoleon is not someone no. you can refuse. You kind of have to push on. Exactly. So we've set up a line here. I move myself closer. We're going to try and get 
try to develop the enemy a bit. Yeah. And, uh, and catch them on all sides. Unfortunately, I think they got like a defensive terrain bonus over here, being like uh, um, in the, in the some, trees. some cover, some sort of trees, cover. bushes, yeah. etc. Uh, so it might be at a disadvantage, but these guys can push up. And meanwhile, they're actually getting attacked we're actually by the uh, cannon fire. Yeah. small army to manage this time around, uh, especially compared to the previous one, and I think that also yeah. shows like the flexibility um, of the engine, that you can play very big battles all by yourself, very small battles all by yourself, or mm. play big battles as a part of a, a bigger army. Yeah. So you can set up the entire battle of what you do, um, where you take command of a minor officer in there, mm -hmm. only controlling your brigade, for example, you're going to wheel you a bit to actually play the engine. Me forward. Um, yeah, we have these guys moving forward slowly because yep. they're advancing on the enemy flank. You can see they're actually getting hit. Yep. Yep. Uh, so that's going very well. Um, hello, uh, Lucifer82. Yes, infantry can move into these buildings and can shoot from it. Um, and when they are, it's extremely annoying to, to push them out. Unfortunately, that's exactly our mission for this scenario. Mm. Um, so basically you have to pump them as much as you can uh, and exhaust their ammunition before they uh, even think of running out or surrendering. But first we have to clear them from the area in front of the, uh, the fortress. Now, we're not off to a great start. You can see already these guys are suffering a lot. Okay. That is a lot of fortresses. 170 million. Most of the killing at yeah. the moment. Of course, you can imagine that reloading, aiming, shooting is a bit easier when you're not under fire yourself. Yes. Yes. And we got Jim joining here uh, from North of that, actually the development team behind this game. So if you have any uh, question, just type it here in the Twitch chat, and Jim will try and answer it for you. Uh, thank you very much for being here, Jim. We had Connor here earlier, helping out a lot. And uh, your presence here is uh, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. So here we've now moved up very close to the flank. Hopefully we can start opening fire. There we go. That should really get some casualties. Unfortunately, again, we're still being attacked by the artillery, even though it's very far away. It's, of course, on a slope, so it's firing a bit downhill. Mm -hmm. Okay, we managed to actually push these up. Oh, that's nice. So we now wheel around to exactly. This, okay, this is going well. Side, yeah. You can see a lot more men dropping. Although, if you select these guys now, they've suffered more casualties because they're in more direct line of fire. Yep. But that's correct. They also still need to push you down somehow. Yeah. Right, and they don't like this. This is the AI outsmarting me. They retreat <laughs> a bit, hoping I will wheel toward the enemy and then face me again. And you, you fell right into their trap. Right into their trap. And it isn't the first time. It isn't the first time. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be the last. <laughs> and here I'm always thinking I can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> So we got our artillery pounding away as well, but that's basically all the reinforcements we're going to get. Finally, they have given up. Yeah. So now we're going to run them in quickly, and one of the reasons to do that also is to get them behind the fort, which makes it much more difficult, of course, for the enemy artillery to target me. Yeah. You guys are pretty much spent already. <laughs> 206 casualties. them on your own, that's not so right. And I'm going to run in myself a bit closer as well. And here you can see again the line of casualties. Yeah. Just shows a lot of discipline as well, mm -hmm. being able to die in such a nice line. They didn't um, really waver from, from that position, which was formidable. Exactly. 
so we're moving in closely and we've got control of the first victory location over here mm -hmm. and once we clear up the enemy we should be able to move on to the next one which will of course be more difficult if the enemy actually managed to get some troops in there yeah. but that cannon fire is going to be if you do manage to get some troops in there that cannon fire is just going to continue to you know, hammer down on you definitely yes what's your plan for for that or are you just pushing forward just pushing forward pushing forward uh, men are expendable mm. sort of so they're reforming again mm -hmm. so they're they're running off they're not routing mm -hmm. they're running off because they think like okay this is an engagement we're not winning so we need to get a bit of distance reform and try again and that's very annoying to do because as a player you're very inclined to follow up and keep yeah. charging 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 into them yeah. And suddenly you find yourself surrounded by all kinds of enemies. And they're actually entering the building. Now. Which is even worse for me. I need to get up a steady line of fire. You. And we got, we just briefly lost uh, visual here with the other room. We're going to try and restore it quickly. So please bear with us for that. We're going to continue fighting and, and pushing back the Brits. Seems like we got a fresh unit of the 3rd uh, British Infantry Division, the 2nd Light Battalion coming up. I'm not happy with that either. Somehow they got reinforcements where I don't. So that's not a good sign, of course. And it seems like we got footage back. Let's see if we can. Yes, there, there it is. Excellent. So the Brits have gotten some fresh units out there. They have? Yes. Would you class that as being outnumbered now? Uh, yes, outnumbered uh, at position as well. Mm. I mean, I got a decent line going here. Yeah, and you're protected by the by the building, so the cannons don't yeah. have much of a good shot. And you're actually the remains of uh, of my previous army that was like that I commanded while playing as Cantelo mm -hmm. in my previous attack and all of these are significantly smaller than at the start of previous battle. Yeah. Some units even completely routed like here should be a fourth battalion mm -hmm. um, up there. And again that's the carryover mechanic that you will see in uh, different scenarios in game. And hello Katie Curry lover, nice to have you here as well. They, they run away, they regroup, they come they back, back, and then a the fresh unit will step in. Right, yeah. So at some point, our guys are going to run out of fatigue. And they're just going to be... You don't really have the reserves that they exactly. have at this point. They're making very good use of their superiority in numbers. Mm -hmm. Even though I might have done that in individual fights, especially yeah. against the, the light of the day. And if you're just jumping in, we are playing for the entire day the Battle of Waterloo, like a digital reenactment as well as a board game reenactment. We got going in the other room. Mm -hmm. Every now and then we'll switch positions, yep. um, and we are following as much as possible the schedule of the actual battle. Well, not that the actual battle went according to schedule. Uh, we're following. They, they were actually delayed due to rain. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, but we're following like the the same time as the historical engagements were. 
And now we're on our attack, on our on the second attack actually of La Haye Saint, and we're doing that with all the troops that were carried over from the previous scenario we played, when we launched the full attack, and the casualties can still be seen over here. Yeah. We launched the full attack on the Allied lines that filled, unfortunately, um, or at least was inconclusive in game terms. But we did better than the podium. Arguably, we did better. Well, yes. We we, we, we did had better than went historically. More hindsight. The advantage of my side. You can see some forms of the squares that were formed over here. Yep. Um, so that was okay ish. But still, lots of casualties, and we're really feeling that now in this scenario, uh, where you have to make do with, with whatever is left. So I'm going to have you guys move around. To, I'm not sure if I want you guys to move around to extend the line and keep you in reserve. If I extend the line, I might face these guys over the ones, then I'm outnumbered. I'm going to creep, creep up. Let's creep up slowly. Let's just, and this is the fire in advance command, so I right click on the flag in order them to, to advance when engaged. So, so what they're going to do, rather than stand in line and shoot, they're going to mm -hmm. shoot, take a step, reload, shoot again, and take a step, and then slowly advance the while doing so. Yeah. Exactly. And you see that they only start actually carrying out my order as soon as my messenger arrived. Yeah. Carrying the order from my position, and I'm over here to the uh, position of my troops. And here it seems like we've got a lightning force coming up. Uh, luckily, they are heavily targeted by our artillery, so we get some casualties. Mm -hmm. I might have to move these guys up to protect the player. And indeed, they're wheeling into position to yeah. take our entire. But doesn't that give us um, a better aim with our cannons to shoot? It it, it does yes. Down? Our cannons have a have a nice aim at that now. Um, shooting up down the slope here. Yep. Um, we're gonna forget the trees here, and they should be able to introduce some casualties. But the problem is these cannons are. Uh, controlled by the AI, so mm -hmm. they are not under my command, yeah. so the commander might pick other priority targets. Mm. Um, obviously every commander thinks that his assignment is the most important yes. one in the battle and will focus as, many up, as much effort as possible on that specific location. Feel free to speed it up guys. You see here, I ordered these guys to stop and a courier goes, I ordered these guys to start running without a courier because they were close enough to me to actually hear the command verbally. Just yell behind his shoulder, really. In very proper French. Yes. And again, if you're seeing this game for the first time, or if you have any questions about it, we've got Jim from the development team over here in the Twitch chat. So you can just write up your, uh, your question up there, and we'll try and answer it for you. Grand battery, for example, this part of the grand battery is more of coming aiming forward right and the line yeah, yeah. the skirmishers, which is which are lying down. Uh, they're not at this point, they're, not really down, they're no. just standing up, but it's not going to be very effective if you they're miss. spread out, yeah. So. And their cannons are doing the same thing as the back of you, yes, on that ridge, they are. So it's not going all too well here. They're just us. coming in for an update, so you're saying it's not going too well? Uh, no, no, not at all. Again, I'm carrying over like the troops from my previous battle, and I suffered a lot of casualties holding that ridge. Oh, right. And now I have to you're use... You're paying the price for that um, reckless behaviour earlier. Exactly, and now I have to use these troops to push the Brits out of here, but they got so many... So what happens in, in the gap between where the fight now and where you... Um, right, so in the last the battle, we ended with the squares being here, yeah. And the but cavalry the was being in uh, the gap between the two scenarios. The British pushed you out exactly. The, the British pushed me out. Um, we retreated back to our standard positions on this hill, and we could see the remains of my force being deployed. Yes, mm. that is really noticeably less men. Yeah. Do you know how many men you've actually lost? Uh, I should have checked at the end of the scenario. I, I'm not sure now. So what's the plan now then? Uh, we are ordered to take Blaise Saint again. Okay. 
and that's already not really the most motivating assignment, taking something you captured before <laughs> and then get rebuffed. And, and um, I've heard rumours of uh, dust on the horizon as well. Off to the east, there are um, definitely uh, troops on the way. Yes, unfortunately. If we look at the map over here, so we here we have the, the forces we, we commanded uh, in the previous scenario. We pushed them all the way here, mm -hmm. uh, got rebuffed, and now we have to, we, we're trying to do Back it on that again. Hill starting on. And, and like you say, uh, the Prussians are on their way. They will be coming in from over here. And there's quite a lot of reserves back there. Who are they? Um, they got they got reserve formations of reserve cavalry. Are these available to you or there? These um, are not available to me. I'm only a brigade commander in this specific okay. scenario. And a big deal of these reserves will be redeployed I'm to you. Gonna have to deal with the Prussians. Plus one to deal with the Prussians. And we're going to see some fighting of the Prussians in later scenarios. Which road is it the Prussians are coming down? Uh, they're coming more or less from this, these roads over here, if I recall correctly. And then the French will be deployed in a line here to cover their flank. So you're not hoping for many reinforcements at the moment? No, no. Not at all. And again, so for the French at this point, time is very much of the essence. Because the longer they wait, the more enemy troops will be coming in. So just give a quick update to anyone that's just joining us. Um, we are refighting the Battle of Waterloo. We started at 10.30 this morning. Um, we've, uh, we'll fight it through to conclusion at around 8 o'clock tonight. We're covering the entire battle. We're fighting it inside Scourge of War, Waterloo, which released um, just, uh, just over a week ago. And um, we're also refighting it in Field of Glory in the um, Polyonics, the tabletop gaming system, and we can compare the results. Um, so far today, the French started with some early victories. They pushed the, the British back ar around Hugomont, um, and they really started to threaten the, the rear of Hugomont and the, the supplies coming into it, so that was looking good for the French. And uh, Papelot um, fell to French hands. That was the far right of the line. But since then, things have definitely taken a turn for the worse. Mm -hmm. An earlier attack, Dillon's main uh, assault on the British line, um, in the centre right of the, the French line, really didn't penetrate. It got slightly further than Elrond did in reality, but it really was, it was not a major victory. It was the British really held him off, to be honest. Um, and now Bart's just playing on from that position, and he took heavy casualties in that assault. And that's what I think you mentioned earlier. So yeah, and I'm taking heavy casualties now again, and my troops are actually running. And um, now the Prussians have started to, we hear rumours of Prussians arriving on the right, uh, coming from the east. So the French right is now um, under pressure from that. French reserves haven't been allocated yet, but it does feel like the tide of the battle is turning against the French right now. So this is not going to be a successful attack. Uh, we're just outnumbered here because of the casualties taken in the previous battle. What happens if, it, what's the downside to not capturing this? Um, is it better just to, to hold your ground rather than suffer more losses in a futile assault on the Hay Saint? Um, well, it might, well, in game terms, you need to clear these for the victory locations. Um, so there are three victory locations. There's one over here, which then, as soon as you cleared it, you basically got the victory, and the mm -hmm. location disappears. So then you have to clear this area, and then, if possible, even clear the fields opposite to it, um, where you're very close again to have like a safe entry to the, to can become very close to the British artillery. Yeah. Um, so far, though, we initially pushed the French out of this area, very, uh, the British. English, British, fairly quickly, but um, they committed reserves. We didn't, because we don't have any. <laughs> and <laughs> we are getting pushed back uh, as quickly as we, as we managed to move up. So this is my only... Uh, so the rest of the troops on, in this scenario are outside of your control. Exactly, yes. You're a, you're a, a, kind of a, a lower level of command. In this exactly. Scenario. I'm playing as uh, Colonel uh, Claude Charlet of the uh, Cholet Brigade, of the 1st Infantry Division. Um, so that's just one brigade. You seem to have done a good job of really kind of killing everyone under command. Yes, <laughs> uh, definitely. Well, no, a lot got away. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them ran away before they got killed. Yeah, these guys are going to break very soon. I suppose. So I So I might run away now. And hope they can do a voluntary retreat. Well, if I run away now and, and make a step more here, with yep. where some of my units are reorganizing, I get them closer to my artillery, to my yep. allied artillery, that is. 
Um, you can stop him and use canister against the British. Exactly. Mm. I'm gonna move again back to the safety of my own troops. And being close to my troops helps, of course, for the uh, command and control because couriers sending the orders don't have to walk as far as they would otherwise. It also gives like uh, a feeling of confidence in the troops having the commander close by. So there's a morale boost. The there's a morale boost for that. Yes. But is there a risk? Could the commander get injured or killed? Commanders can get killed. Um, in which case, in this case, I think the scenario will be over if because you're taking the role of the commander. Right. So you get killed. It's over for you. Uh, in a multiplayer game you would have to wait for uh, a replacement to arrive on the battlefield. And that can take... Uh, sorry for the, for the noise here. No, it's, it's just noticing the comments. Someone said that you're going to get promoted because you saved a lot of wages for the French army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're sick of the money you've saved. Um, your troops are actually facing the wrong way. Oh gosh, yes they are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's reform them quickly. Yeah, probably not good for their morale facing the wrong direction. The British seem to be willing to hang back at the moment. Mm. Yes, which is actually the sensible thing to do. Well, They're to be the time is on their side really. They don't need to defeat you, they just need to stop you defeating them. Exactly, there's no reason for them to attack my lines over here at this point. thinking if we cannot see them they are not there but you can see the discrepancy in troop numbers yeah, yeah. Significant uh, number. and you think this is to do with the casualties you took in Def definitely, definitely yes okay. so had you been more cautious had I been more cautious less reckless exactly <laughs> so not I mean the attack we launched previously could have decided the battle in theory, like if, if historically it had gone very well and really break, broke through the British. But even then, as a commander, you actually, which I don't do now at the moment because I do more like separate scenarios, you really have to take into account do I have an army left after this battle? Mm. Is it not mm. a Pyrrhic victory where I will lose the campaign in its entirety anyway? Yeah. 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 Ian was telling us earlier that there are another half a million Austrians and Russians waiting just miles away. Exactly. So every man you lose here is. Um, Lost. Looks like we're. Oh, the British like push have decided to push forwards. Uh, can't say I'm confident. No. Someone just asking about a Mac version. We would love to do a Mac version, but um, to be honest, it's unlikely. Um, the engine is. Uh, the amount of work to create a Mac version would be enormous. Mm. So. Seeing the British move up, I'm actually doing a very brave tactical retreat. <laughs> We're advancing to the rear. Yes. Exactly. Um, and again, trying to lure them and get them to suffer as much cannon fire as possible before they get. Into are the cannons under your control? They are not. Right, so all you, can, you can't do anything other than lure the British towards them. Which also means that as a commander, I don't feel responsible for any casualties in their side. <laughs> and there's part of this as well, of course with different commanders, you're responsible for the safety and yep. for survival of your regiment. And if the others take the pain, well, you'll get the glory of actually winning, then it's probably quite realistic. <laughs> but even even though there's even a win of British Exactly, there. even with the cavalry, or with the artillery uh, backing me, it's going to be tough. And they open fire, defeat. and the time is up, and we suffered a major defeat, and to be honest, yes. You can talk about your defeat for a moment, I'm just going to check if the right. top guys mm. are ready for it. So we suffered here a major defeat. We suffered too many casualties uh, in order to do a proper attack. And the attack we did do, we got so many casualties again um, that mm. we basically lost again half our force. So, yeah, the tide is turning in battle. Yeah. It seems the British are... Uh, so how will, how will this carry forward to the to the next... This won't uh, for this now. Won't. No, no, no. Um, let's see what we've got coming in the next um, hour. So, in uh, about half an hour, we're going to start with the cavalry charge on uh, Mont Saint Jean. Mm -hmm. um, so the famous, like part of famous Ney's cavalry charge that was supposed to 
break the already wavering British only right. to be to find that they're deployed in squares waiting for them so that's going to be interesting mm -hmm. and after that we get uh, some Prussian action actually uh, we're going to play briefly the um, French troops that defend against the uh, defend against the incoming Prussians at Prussian uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that we're going to shift it around and we're going to continue the attack with the Prussians um, attacking attacking the French troops and attacking the French in the rear. Uh, and finally, we're doing a scenario where uh, we're going to defend against Napoleon's Imperial Guard, which, of course, um, he brought up at the very end of the battle as like the last hope yep. um, to break the, the British. So we're going to see that as well. So there's still a lot to come on this end, and there's also still a lot to come on the end of the uh, uh, tabletop wargaming mm -hmm. we got over in the other room. You can see it in the smaller window in the top right. Uh, we're going to increase the size for you a bit, have some talks with the different commanders in a bit as well. Um, but to see how the battle is going for them and how it compares to uh, to what's happening on our end. Yes. So that should see be interesting. They have uh, more, more victory than us. Exactly. So we're going to go over there now, and I think we have Ian uh, talking a bit about the uniforms as well. So that should be interesting. So let's shift to, to over there.